In order for us to adequately talk about the concept of the hyperbola, I wanted to start with a definition. This is the same definition that we would have seen regarding uh, last section. So we're going to start with two points. We're going to refer to those as foci or foci. Both of those pronunciations are correct, which is the plural of focus. So in last section, we said an ellipse is the set of all points such that the sum of the distances to the foci is constant. So as long as that sum is constant, you have an ellipse. That's the definition that I gave you last section. Here I'm going to give you a slightly altered definition here where I'm going to change this word, sum, to difference. After I change that sum to difference, this is no longer an ellipse. This is now officially a hyperbola. So a hyperbola is the set of all points such that the difference of the distances to the foci is constant. <clears throat> now, based on these two definitions, I hope that uh, it communicates that not geometrically, but based on the definition, an ellipse and a hyperbola are very, very similar things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little ellipse column right here. I'm going to make a corresponding hyperbola column over here, and we'll just do a quick side-by-side -side analysis of what the two of these things look like. So as far as the ellipse is concerned, if I put a focus here and I put a focus here, and I define a point out here, we'll put F here and F here, and then this distance right here and this distance right here, if we call this D1 and D2, we showed this in the other section, but D1 plus D2 is going to have to be equal to 2a, and we'll define or redefine what a is in just a second. If we do the same thing for the hyperbola, and we put a focus here, and we put a focus here, and we put a point here, and we refer to these two guys as, once again, d1 and d2, then based off of the definition that we just said above, d1 minus d2 is going to wind up being equal to 2a. Now, we don't necessarily have that D1 is going to be longer, so if D1 is shorter, this winds up being negative. So we'll go ahead and toss a little absolute value around here to make sure that we know that this is going to stay as a, uh, a positive quantity. Now, we were able to define the ellipse in terms of five points that all lie along the same either vertical or horizontal axis. These points were referred to as the vertex, the focus, the center, the focus, and the vertex, we refer to that as the major axis. Well, those same five points exist for the hyperbola as well. However, the order in which we see those five points is not the same. So if it's ever vertices on the outside and foci on the inside, that is an ellipse. However, if we flip it around and we put the foci on the outside and the vertices on the inside, and the center smack dab in the middle, then you have a hyperbola. This is known as the transverse axis of the hyperbola. <clears throat> and I tell my students this all the time. If you have the audacity to slip up and refer to the transverse axis as the major axis, then yeah, that's pretty normal and we make that mistake a lot. So don't worry about it. Additionally, we have some distances associated with these. Uh, now, regarding the ellipse, the ellipse, the general shape of this is pass through the vertex and curve around the focus, through the vertex around the focus. That is not a great drawing. I'll forgive myself if you will. Uh, the hyperbola actually works the same way. It'll still pass through a vertex and curve around a focus. The difference between the ellipse and the hyperbola geometrically is that the hyperbola just has two sides. We've got one side opening this way and one side opening this way and the two do not connect in the middle. Additionally, we have some distances associated with this. The distances were defined as A, B, and C for the ellipse. Uh, the distance A was the distance from the center to a vertex. The distance B was the distance from the center to a co-vertex. Co-vertices would be on the top side and bottom side of the center for the horizontal major axis. And then the distance C was from the center to a focus. Now, additionally, for the ellipse, the biggest one of these is A. And so 
These are related by the Pythagorean theorem. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. Now, if you were thinking to yourself, that looks kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, but isn't it usually A squared plus B squared is C squared? Well, the reason it works out this way is because A has to be the biggest of these three quantities for the ellipse. I have great news, though, as far as how it translates to the hyperbola. We're still going to define the distance A to be from the center to a vertex. We're going to define B as being the distance from the center to a covertex, and we will define C as being the distance from the center to the focus. And as you can see, these three distances here and these three distances here, they are defined exactly the same way. The big difference is, and we'll use this picture to help us out, let's go back to red, distance C to V, we just define that as A, and C to F, we define that as C. As you can see, C is now bigger than A is. As such, when we relate these distances together, they are still related by the Pythagorean theorem, but now our Pythagorean theorem looks like it's back to normal. They are linked by A squared plus B squared, is equal to c squared. Finally, the standard form for the uh, ellipse centered at the origin, standard form. So this is for a horizontal major axis <clears throat> centered at the origin. So it was x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. As it turns out, that because the only thing that we changed in the new definition is change sum to difference, that's the only change that there will be in standard form of the hyperbola as well. So standard form of the equation of a hyperbola is going to be x squared over a squared. This will be minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now again, for both of these, this is for a horizontal major axis or in this case, the horizontal transverse axis. If we do encounter a case where there is a vertical major or transverse axis, we can account for that as well. This will stand for vertical major axis. For the ellipse, we just switch around the x and the y. Everything else stays the same. We'll switch around the x and the y. We have ourselves a vertical major axis. For the uh, hyperbola, it works the same way. If we have a vertical transverse axis, then that'll be y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared. That'll be equal to 1. Now, big difference in the equations is for the ellipse. For the ellipse, it was simply, oh, in here. Uh, whichever denominator is largest, that is going to represent your a variable because, well, we can switch the order of the addition and that doesn't change anything. But for the hyperbola, if you change the order of the subtraction, uh, it's no longer the same value anymore. So for the hyperbola, it's whichever one has the positive coefficient, that will always be a. So generally, it's going to be the one that comes first in the subtraction. That will refer to your a value. More in future videos.